probably my one biggest regret is staying at my last company as long as I have. Five years, right? Yeah, five years. And it was quite a journey. I learned a lot, right? I learned a lot from what a startup has to do to go from like series A to series B and series B to mm-hmm. series C. Not being able to just make that decision and move on. Like I tried to persevere and try to work mm-hmm. through um, just like the road bumps along the way. But after getting like passed up on promotions, not getting paid what I deserved. And I don't know, just even getting a job at Amazon, it just felt like kind of the stamp of approval or stamp of confidence mm-hmm. that, hey, you deserve to get paid this much more. You deserve to get yeah. that respect as a software developer that at my company, they were just make, they were just creating these guardrails for me to not succeed. And when that really? happens, uh, yeah, when that happens, I've just go, oh, okay, well, maybe it's just time to move on because obviously I'm not in an environment where I'm appreciated, right? I have a question. So... Shoot. What is it that made you leave the last job before joining Amazon? Yeah, I mean, it was just a myriad of stuff. I was working at a startup and with a startup, there's a lot of growing pains. And when I joined my company, I think there was about 15 people. And then it blew up to like 200 um, within five years. Yeah. Wow. So just a lot of growing pains. Um, Some people that were software developers turned into managers that technically weren't qualified to be managers, but they became managers because... Sounds like a startup. (laughs) Yeah, sounds like a typical startup. I kind of follow the same mantra as you did, where I said, hey, let my work speak for itself, or I would mostly focus on my role as an individual contributor. But then I started noticing that as the company got bigger, like these put, quote unquote managers were also trying to make like technical decisions, even though they weren't the most technically sound people. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so yeah. it was it was just a lot of like office politics kind of thing. And it's it was a little bittersweet because, to be honest, I learned so much there where I mean, got me to where I am at Amazon. Right. But yeah. in terms of just the politics and just growing pains of going from 15 to 60 to 60 to 100 and 100 to 200 like it was just really hard to feel as important or feel as uh respected at a company because it is what it is right company gets big if you don't have the right infrastructure then how are you going to know what to do with your employees right so what were you unhappy with that made like what what, let's say you left that company but what was it that made you the least happy least happy it was a mixture of maybe respect i think the respect was gone and that was kind of respect coming from for both, you both ways in some regards mm. and from that point of view i just knew that it was time and to be completely frank again it i was scared to leave right when you're mm. at a company for five years you, start, you start questioning number six number 16 yeah and you start questioning a little bit like am i even good enough to go to a different company and when i was interviewing for places i was actually failing a lot of interviews because i had an interview for five years right so my imposter syndrome was pretty high and whenever you go through interviews as an experienced developer yeah you get a lot more interviews but they're a lot more pickier about who they hire they want Mm -hmm. you to know your stuff there's less leeway for mistakes during the technical interviews and you kind of have to be on top of your game so um, i definitely was rusty and i was even talking to some of my old co-workers that left as well and they were also rusty because they everyone got comfortable mm-hmm. in some regards yeah. and you just yeah, yeah i kind of lucked out in a sense that amazon was my last interview and i went through all wow. the failed interviews first and then i learned <laughs> from that to actually of course study that and work hard yeah so it kind of saved the best wow. for last mentality. It worked out, yeah. But wow. I, when you know, you know, right? And it's it, it is what it is. I hope I hope the best for that company as well. But uh, yeah, it was not the it wasn't leaving on the most pleasant terms. But yeah. at the same time, I just knew it was time to leave. What do you yeah. mean it, not the most pleasant terms? Is it because they didn't want you to leave? I don't think they cared at that point. But there was one wow. point, like two and a half, three years ago, like I had a, I had an offer that, uh, that will that wanted to hire me, and I actually just accepted the counter offer from my company because they really, really showed that they wanted 
me at the company, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a mixture of just not maybe not feeling a little appreciated at the same time. Like maybe, you know, what if you have a family and you have two kids and then all of a sudden you have four kids, like the priority just becomes less, right? So uh, I, I get it. And yeah. being a, C- I can't imagine ever being like a CEO of that many employees so uh yeah it's it was a mixture of those things that made me want to leave but ultimately i i think i knew what my value was and i didn't see or feel that at the company so when i got my role at amazon i was like oh wow i do i can make like eighty thousand dollars more or a hundred thousand dollars more than what i was making before it's wow like (laughs) it's unimaginable (laughs) sometimes when you go during these reviews and they say uh like alex or chris like we can't pay you that much right i'm sorry like you're not producing that level of output or like you're not that skilled enough like maybe they say in a nicer way but that's basically saying that you're not worth that much right Mm. and then that's when you could just kind of prove them wrong and say like hey look this is who I am and I yeah. know my worth. Our uh, experiences are a little bit different in a sense that, and, and the same, right? Like maybe it's similar in a sense that we didn't start enjoying what we were doing at our company. Mm-hmm. And so we decided to move on. And then in some regards, like you still like the people. I like the people there too, most of them, but yeah, yeah. it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> in what scenario would you take less money? Like, what would they have to do to oh, pitch I, I, I you and you be this. like... I, I technically am making less money. Sorry, can you recap? I am taking less money. And what I mean mm-hmm. by this aspect is, I was going to be promoted to senior engineer. I see. And I was going to make a lot more. more than, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah thirty dollars to $50,000 more, right? Uh, 50, maybe $50,000 more than what I'm earning now. And also, I was going to get promoted. So by me taking this job... By the way, I'm not getting the stocks. I was supposed to invest as well in what in February. So I'm taking less money. But the reason I still took the job, I think it was because of the was the potential. Like when you see that the Microsoft is investing in a particular company, that's a really good sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when when you see a company like Microsoft leading the Series B, right? And now they're on Series C now. Uh, I feel like that's a really good sign. But I mean, you have experience on this as well, seeing these different things. But I, I felt like that was a good sign. And at the same rate, I live really below my means, so I'm not really taking much of a loss compared to someone who makes, let's say, $150,000 a year, but they live like they make 150 k a year. I live mm-hmm. like I make $70,000 a year. Yeah. Right. Or $60,000 a year, even though I make three, uh, you know, two or three times more than that. Right. Right. So it, I have, it just, it's not that hard of a decision for me. Right. So at a certain point, maybe the number is not as important as we kind of describe it as, right? Like you would, in some regards, you you're saying you're taking maybe a thirty to fifty thousand dollar pay cut, but it's about at what point is your kind of threshold for saying yeah yeah this is fine, and maybe yeah. there's more potential down the line to making a lot more through stock options or whatever. No, hundred percent. Um, no, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So my my question then is like, what? When do you know? My question is, when do you know that you're when did you know you were unhappy to the point that you just left? Like, how do you know? Because I knew I was unhappy after six yeah. months. Here, and I've been here for 10 months. Or That's crazy. Months. Six months out of 10 months? Yeah. You, you would say majority uh, you know, well, of the time you were uh, unhappy? One person left before me. Everyone thought mm-hmm. I would leave first, actually. Everyone mm-hmm. thought I would leave first. Someone else left mm-hmm. before me. Right? Then I finally left. So another person transferred to another team, right? So, yeah. Like, how do you know when? How do you know when? You were just unhappy. I'm probably the bad person to ask about this, considering I stayed at my company for five years. <laughs> um, even when you weren't happy. Even when I wasn't, yeah, very happy because wow. I, I I try to persevere through it, and that's why I said I commended you. You're making you for me look so just, bad right now. <laughs> no, no, I mean oh, that's why I actually I praised you for doing what you did, and in some regards because. Yeah, there is some respect for being able to like go through the mud with your company and, you know, getting over that hill. But at the same time, when it feels like people are just kind of using your shoulders to get higher and higher or like just taking advantage of you, that's that's when I realized that I kind of needed to 
uh move on from it because for sure there's a lack of maybe a lack of appreciation that's when you know that you're no longer like welcomed at your company or you notice that the new people that are coming in they're getting a lot more say with technical decisions even though they have no experience whatsoever there's a lot of different uh variables that uh that came into play 